Thank you so much for coming. I'm very excited today. We'll be talking about modular and SIPs built homes. And yes, we do focus a lot on energy efficiency and they are the most efficient built homes on the planet. One thing we haven't focused on and we really need to pay attention, especially in light of the climate change that we're we're experiencing throughout the country and throughout the world. These kinds of homes were originally built in Japan, which is an island. It's built on, on volcanoes. So they started to try to find an alternative to the way they're building because they were losing homes. Okay, here in the Midwest, it's not much of a problem, but on both coasts, they're about to get battered by constant climate change. We just had a tornado with snow. That's unheard of. During the summer, we had over a month of close to 100 degree uh, weather. That's unheard of. These are not only energy efficient, but they are sustainable against harsh weather. So welcome to MJ TV, not HD TV. We talk about what's important to you. So let's dive right in with my interview with TJ Hammerstrom from Hopo 360 Modular Homes. <laughs> Did you know that there is a revolution and an evolution in the building industry? It's called net zero, net zero ready and passive homes, but they're not built like traditional homes. So there are many ways to get to net zero and I have the honor and the pleasure of interviewing TJ Hammerstrom with Hopewell 360 today. Hey, TJ. Well, hello, Angel. Thank you for letting us come over and ask you a few questions. This is a very exciting time in the building industry and in the in for climate change, for building materials, for the shortages we have, because of net zero really solves a lot of those problems. So before we get into the interview, I'd like to invite you, please sign up below. Love to keep in touch with you. We are going to talk about inventory, what's available today and coming up. So if you're interested at all in knowing more about Net Zero, sign up below so we can be in touch. So TJ, uh, Hope Go 360 is your company. And tell us a little bit about what do you really do? Well, it's a consortium of folks. It's not just my company. We've got plenty of partners uh, in lots of different categories. It's a village, right? It's a village. It, it, uh, it's basically, uh, yeah, a village. <laughs> it started when a couple of colleagues came to me and asked, you know, what are we going to do about housing? Housing stock is just too expensive. It's it's not available. How how can we build and it? And it needs upgrading. And, yeah. How how can we do it differently? So we you know we set out a we set out a goal to uh, reduce. Uh, you know, our, our, our building costs and our operating costs four and a half years ago. And mm -hmm. we've been studying that process and how to get there um, ever since. So the housing shortage isn't really new. This has been going on for quite a while. Yeah, it has. Right. And that's the thing, too. What do we do with all of this stock 1900 to now? So we have to, we have, to have better alternatives than the way we've been building. TJ, what are some of the uh, benefits of modular construction? Tight envelopes. I guess those would be uh, that that that's the primary number one. Tell people what a tight envelope really means in a building. It just means that you when you when you pump it full of air, it doesn't leak. That's really what it means. You've got this little house in a little shell, and it's totally tight. It's tight, yep. right? And so uh, when you can start with that, then we can talk about net zero. You know, until right. that's, until, a, that's un a starting point. Until that envelope is is tight like that, where it doesn't leak. And you can control how it leaks. I mean, let's let's talk about it that way. Um, then you really shouldn't be talking about net zero, in my opinion. Okay. Some people get a little confused when you, they hear the word modular because they equate it with prefab. You know, the old prefab. What's the difference? Um, well, this one's uh, it's it's we like to call it uh, volumetric, but we're going to make keep it simple and talk modular. For, oh, you're going to have to explain <laughs> volumetric modular. You're gonna oh my have gosh. To. So. Um, I guess the, the biggest difference is, is that it does come complete. It's like Lincoln Law. It's like a model when you were a kid. It's really what it right. is. And it comes with instructions. I mean, it really literally just comes with instructions so that when you bring it to the to the property, you can stick these big modular units together that are finished on the inside. You can string the water hoses and the, and the electrical. 
So last week I came out and I saw one of the modules being lifted over the trees onto site. Right. Okay, so it took four modules to build that building. Mm -hmm. What's inside? How finished are they once, they once they're put together? Well, this is why you guys are here, is to show this. This is exactly how they come. So the tile on the walls, the range hood, all the cabinets, all the flooring um, comes in the unit up until when you put them together, then you got to do the threshold. Cabinets are all in, all the electrical, all the plumbing, um, obviously all the lighting, insulation. It's a done unit. So this is all pre-planned, yeah. pre-installed before it leaves the factory. It's an engineered product. So um, it, it, it starts with the raw material of all your you know, regular stock lumber, goes through its various stations on the on the factory floor, and each each module um, becomes a part of an overall building. And in this case, there was, like you said, four modules for, for this twin home. Um, they came in on uh, trucks. This, one's, uh, this one was 52 foot in length and 14 foot wide, so there was four of those units. It was huge. <laughs> it, was, it was big, yeah. So um, the, the modules uh, that have all the kitchens in them and all your plumbing, we like to stack those modules on top of each other. It just makes more sense as far as engineering goes. Um, for all the plumbing to line up. Yeah, for all the right. plumbing. Plumbing, electric lines up, but it's already installed. Right, and it, and it wow. also allows that it also allows the line in the in the factory to operate more efficiently too, because you got certain crews that can just do certain things when it comes to that. They're specialists. Yeah, they're specialists. They, you know, they make walls, and one will do the cabinets are no different than in the field, like what traditional is, except for you're in a you're in an enclosed, environment. conditioned environment as a worker doing your plumbing. And it's not electrical. freezing out, and the basement isn't wet. And so, right, all yeah, those variables. All of that. That's you know, you great. show up to work, uh, it's a whole different scene. So, you have a sample here. Can you talk about this? Please? Yeah, so it goes back to the envelope. Um, so, this is a SIP module, or I'm sorry, a SIP wall. Uh, this is a panel. SIP is structurally insulated panel. Yeah, this one's unique because it's really not even uh, permitted or, or uh, licensed for the U.S. yet. It'll be, uh, it's a brand new product that uh, we're bringing in from Uruguay of all places. Um, and it is going to serve us all very, very well. So what was so interesting to me when you were talking about this is the, the surface on both sides is like a cement. It's a cement product. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, a family. It's kind it's of a, family. it's a cement board that's, that's probably, uh, it's a green cement board that really is a member of, this, of the porcelain family. And so it's a structurally insulated panel. These can actually uh, uh, bear weight up to 36 feet in height. So you can do three-story buildings out of these. Okay. This is a four-inch version. This would be in the more warmer climates. You right. Know? And uh, up in our neck of the woods, we'd, we'd have uh, six-inch um, walls. So what you told me, too, is so interesting. This looks like cement on here, which it happens to be really trendy, too, in design. So... You don't have to clad this in anything. You can put an exterior, you can put vinyl on it, you can clad it with stone, mm -hmm. but you can leave it like this too. And the same is on the inside. So if you want that whole studio warehouse look, you can do that too. And you just clear coat it. Clear coat it, paint it, whatever. Yep. Brand new product, not here yet. You heard it here first. <laughs> so what are the design limitations of using a product like this? It's a model. Like I said, it's uh, whatever your design is, it just gets turned into uh, shop drawings versus our, versus construction documentation. Like what's what normally happens now. Okay. So get your design, but uh, yeah, get your design on and we'll, 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 we'll put it through a, a factory. It might not now, go. you told me originally, you showed me that the original design for this home, it, it is a twin house, was very modern. Mm -hmm. And St. Paul said, not so much. South St. Paul. South St. Paul. Well, yeah. They want it a little more traditional. Mm -hmm. So it can be super modern. It can be traditional. Um, sometimes even the net zero homes are designed to look like they are antique. I saw one that looked really like the 1880s. It was built that way. Yeah. But it was a net zero house built that way. Correct. So, <clears throat> and volumetric modern, uh, modular. Tell us a little, you know, we've, we're seeing so many weather disasters across the country. Mm. Yeah. So you told me, too, that the, the Japanese were the first ones to start using materials like this because they are 
the whole island is seismic. Yeah, you know, that's really how this in, this industry got started um, <clears throat> some 40 some years ago when the Japan, uh, the country itself, decided to start building things differently to sustain all that uh, te tectonic. Yeah, uh, the movement. The movement, but, ground mm -hmm. movement. And so uh, they started engineering buildings and blocks to make them stronger. And uh, throughout that process, they figured, why not put the interiors in them as well when they crane them all in place because it made more sense. And they, they went from, uh, you know, they, it just evolved into a really, really efficient way to go about building it. About 20% of all the product in Japan is built out of volumetric modular construction. When you say all the product, do you kind of new product? No, all the new construction, whether it be office, construction. right, whether it be office or, or residential. Okay. I mean, 40 stories, 50, 60 stories is, is not uncommon in a, in, in a, in a module. 40, 60 stories? Mm -hmm. Wow. That's a lot of weight. So those are built around a steel grid or? They are. So it's a yeah. steel, it's a steel frame that they either interlock. All okay. right. Or they put, they basically slide in, you know, modular units in each one of the, each one of the bays. So what would this mean to areas like both coasts that are getting battered with hurricanes in the central with uh, flooding and tornadoes? How does this make it better? Well, it, it certainly gives you a better chance of not having your house blow down, that's for sure. <laughs> um, Hurricane Dornan uh, down in Bahamas, uh, actually, we, uh, Vantum built a, built a house with this product uh, in it. And it was the only house standing uh, in the entire neighborhood afterwards. They had to strip. It was totally flooded. They just had to strip out the wires. They just pulled wires out of the chases. Had to re rewire Just to rewire it. it. Mm -hmm. I think one of the big things that stops contractors and builders from using this is they don't know the language. They don't know how to work with it. And they don't know if their clients will love it. How are you thinking to rectify that? I understand that you're going to do a lot of training. I think training is the number one way to go about that and I think uh, seeing is believing I mean we're sitting in one and so you know, yes this is this is the way to do this is to sh it's the show you got to show you how to do it so, so once the modules are on their way from the factory to the site what is your timeline to finish yeah um, 90 days so that's a huge difference isn't it yeah. saving time yeah and how about labor does it save on labor? Right now, it does. It saves about 7% okay. overall in, in cost on a kind of a square foot basis. Okay. So we can get an engineered product already better than a stick frame traditional build um, for about 7% less. And what about the crew? Is it more or less crew hours or about the same? A lot less crew hours. A okay. lot less crew hours. So that's the same, same to the builder? Well, it's the crew hours got spent in the plant, but still right. overall per square foot, a lot less crew crew hours. There's so much waste in traditional construction. They bring the wood, they bring the drywall, everything to the site. Right, right, right. So for those that are, you know, familiar with what job sites do for dumpsters, let's say. So uh -huh. a 30-yard dumpster, you know, it's an $800 cost or plus, plus, depending upon the carrier. Um, we use one dumpster to build 5,400 square feet. Wow, so, what's a normal bill use? Three or four? You'll use four. Four. Yeah. And it's what budgeted do with right that? It's, That's it's, a landfill, it's, it's, isn't it's it? It's budgeted right in. Yeah, so, um, you know, there's 11% waste on stick frame. There's 7% on the factory side. So, so it's, it's a 4%. So it's a 4% savings there. Right. But, but then once you get on site, then you don't have any of that. You know, there's no waste. Four, really. Yeah, really. It's one dumpster. Right. One dumpster. That's impressive. A lot less disruption to the neighborhood. We'll close the street down for one day, house is built. One day, <laughs> put it together. They gotta stitch it together, but then those crews don't disrupt the neighborhood so much. Right, they're not there at seven o'clock in the morning for weeks unending. Yeah, you know, um, hopefully the responsible contractors aren't using those big loud generators either, you know, so we, uh, you know, we use a lot of, we do anyway, we use a lot of battery power. So you have this town here, townhouse over here in uh, South St. Paul, mm -hmm. and you just installed four modules over there last week. You have, so this is the existing property that's yours for sale this minute. Right, yep. Twin Town. We'll have photos for you, don't worry. And you have other projects coming up. Uh, we do. Um, we have several projects coming up. So You're doing both multifamily, like big multifamily, and you're doing single family. Is that right? Correct. 
Tell us a little bit about the apartment buildings that you're building or that are on the drawing board. Sure, right, yeah. So um, we're mm -hmm. we're about trying to figure out how to give, uh, you know, get as many folks into housing as humanly possible that can afford it. And so the, uh, the programming, the fundamental programming for Hopewell 360 is to provide housing for, for workforce, you know, workforce, work stock housing. Um, so our apartment buildings that we've, that we've uh, designed and engineered, uh, each consists of 84 units, uh, primarily uh, studio units, about 50% are studio. Uh, and then the balance is for the ones and two bedrooms. Mm -hmm. there are so a, it's mixed. Yeah, yeah, it's a mix. It's a it's a five story structure. So it's four stories of uh, housing, um, right over a one story of a of a structured parking. Okay. Well. So terrific. Parking's at grade four stories of of, uh, of apartments. Yeah. And you have some single families that you're planting over in Invergrove. That's correct. Yes. TJ, thank you so much for letting us come over and ask you a bunch of questions. Yeah. So how do people be in touch with you? Uh, just call, I guess. Phone six, number? 612-382-6333 um, or email me. Uh, T. Hammerstrom at Hopewell360.com There's so much more to know. We will be doing more segments. You want to stay tuned to know what's coming up. Thanks for coming.